Thank you, ladies. Do I have any EastEnders and Northsiders in the crowd? One? What about any Bodden Towners? Any Red Bears in the crowd? Georgetowners? Am I forgetting anyone else? Any West Bears in this crowd? All right, so we got a few West Bears. <laughs> Before we get started tonight, I, I just wanted to mention that we have apologies from Mr. Jonathan Percy. Um, he is extremely sick, but he wants you to know that he is here with us in spirit and that he hopes to bounce back and be back on the campaign trail again by Wednesday. Oh, sorry, he's sick with the flu. Okay, at this time, I just want to publicly acknowledge our candidates up here, starting to my left. If you, when I call your name, if you could just stand in audience, if you could give them a round of applause. So we have Mr. Robert Bodden from the constituency of Bodden Town East. Mr. Stafford Berry from Bodden Town West. Mr. Denison Tibbetts from Red Bay. Ms. Teresa Tessa Bodden from Georgetown East. Mr. Mike Adam, Georgetown South. Ms. Perlina McGall Lumsden from Georgetown North. Mr. John Jefferson Jr., West Bay South. Captain Eugene Ebanks, West Bay Central. Mr. Bernie Bush, West Bay North. And rounding up our team up here is the Honorable W. McKeever Bush from West Bay West, the one and only. Thank you all. So moving along, now we'll begin. We're gonna have some short speak speeches by all of the candidates tonight. Starting off with my candidate from Bodden Town East, Mr. Robert Bodden. Hello, 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 good night. CDP warriors. You wonderful, beautiful people. God is good. He's alive and miracles still happen. By his grace and forgiveness, I stand before you tonight. I want to thank you all for coming out to listen to our vision and to offer your support to the next government, the Cayman Democratic Party. 
together with her leader, the magnanimous, the honorable Makiva Bush at the helm, with his capable and hardworking team, we will restore hope, opportunities, and put money back into your pockets, ladies and gentlemen. Fired up, ready to go. The CDP train is rolling down the tracks. All aboard. West Bay, how we voting in West Bay? We voting straight. Makiva Bush, Bernie Bush, Captain Eugene, and John Jefferson Jr. Georgetown, who we voting for? Jonathan Percy, Mike Adam, Tessa Teresa Bodden, Perlina Lumsden, Dennis Tibbetts, all aboard. We got some extra seats on this train, ladies and gentlemen. I think the Kenneth Bryan and Austin Pierce is willing to work with us. In Savannah, we got Anthony and Alva. Bon Town, who's on the who's on the station tracks up there? We pick it up. Stafford Berry. And yours truly, Robert Button, has a ticket on this train. This, my friends, is the CDP ticket that will bring hope and prosperity and put us back on solid ground. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the district of Bontown East has been severely neglected, left for dead by previous elected members. Look around, people. Look in Bontown. If Christopher Columbus came back today, the only constituency he would recognize is Bontown East because nothing has changed there. This has to change. Vote for strong leadership. A leader with vision, who has the testicular fortitude to lead and bring legislation to protect our culture, local traditions, and deliver an improved education system. We need a leader, as we have in Mr. Bush, who delivers, one who's connected with the ground and his constituents. A leader who's willing to make tough decisions and negotiate with business owners, the legal and financial institutions, tourism developers, to bring inclusion with the necessary training so that our people can share in the equity that these islands have to offer. Our people are in a spiritual, mental, economic, and social grave. We are not the people we should be or the people we could be. Our people are in anguish. We need better paying jobs in a fair market. We need cost of living control and we need a livable wage. Cayman has developed but many people have fallen through the cracks with no proper solution or intervention to rehabilitate their lives in a way that is sustainable for them. Ladies and gentlemen, our civil service employees want to build their homes and buy land, yet they have no access to their pension fund as in the private sector. This has to change, ladies and gentlemen. We have to provide pension security for all our people. We need to be able to put money in your pockets so you can put food in your refrigerators. Tomorrow has to be better than today and better has to come. This has to change, ladies and gentlemen. Come May 24th, we want you all to come out and support your CDP candidates. We have the power, ladies and gentlemen, to make this change. I tell you tonight, in order to have a government that cares for the people with dedicated representation, who works to bring economic opportunities, vote CDP. Remember, a vote for an independent where a CDP candidate is running is a vote against the CDP party. You only have one vote, ladies and gentlemen, so use that vote wisely. 
Do not vote for candidates who have hidden agendas and use the government position and the people's money for political speed. But down east, you need a leader, a leader with a vision. So on May 24th, choose strong, hardworking leaders that will work for you and your children. The CDP has worked for you before, and we will do it again. Who is the best leader to make that happen again? Makiva Bush, Robert Budden in Budtown East. Tomorrow has to be better than today, and better has to come. Thank you. The next speaker obviously needs no introduction. <laughs> Please welcome Mr. Stafford Berry to the stage. Stafford, come on over. Stafford is running from Bodden Town West. Give it up for Mr. Berry. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Madam Chair, party leader, party supporters, my fellow Bodden Towners, thank you very much for joining us here this evening. I'm very happy to be here with so many friends, family, and terrific candidates. I greatly appreciate your efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, you have all come here today for a myriad of reasons. It's humbling, but in my heart, I know you didn't come here just for me. You came here because you believe this country can be. Ladies and gentlemen, some have claimed that I am too polite to be a politician, as if it was a weakness for me to listen to what you have to say. My friends, I cannot promise to be less of a good guy. You know where I stand, and you know I will fight diligently for the priorities that you hold dear. This campaign can't only be about me. It must be about us. It must be about what we can do together. This campaign must be the occasion, the vehicle of your hopes and your dreams. It will take your time and your energy and your advice which we are grateful for, to push us forward when we are doing right and to let us know when we are not. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's be the generation that make our future generation proud of what we do in the next four years and beyond. <laughs> Today, families are unhappy, even worried about themselves and their future. On the other hand, some may say that things are fantastic and that this country is the best place to live. But the hard truth is that not everyone is sharing in this country's success. Some people are losing their homes through foreclosures, and most young people can't afford one. Where students can't afford the education that they need, and the middle class parents watch the dreams they hold for their children evaporate. Admittedly, there are more people living below the poverty line than ever before. More families are in trouble, and more and more people who need help but can't find it. Even worse, there are elderly people who are struggling on a daily basis and who can't afford the basic needs. Like the senior citizen who lives in my constitu constituents who only receives $35 per month in pension. And the senior citizen who is sick and can't afford medical attention. I must say loud and clear, ladies and gentlemen, that help is on its way. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cayman Democratic Party shares in your pain success. Sharing of benefits and the burden for the good of all. Feeling one another's pain, sharing one another's blessing. Reasonably, honestly, fairly. Without respect to race or sex or political affiliation. Remember that unlike the other party, the Cayman Democratic Party embraces men and women of every color, every creed, every orientation, every economic class, and nationality. We speak for the middle class, the people not rich enough to be worry-free, but not poor enough to be on welfare. The middle class, those people who work for a living because they have to, not because someone told them it was a convenient way to fill the gap between birth and eternity. Young professional, men and women in small businesses, 
desperate for the capital and contract that they need to prove their worth. The Cayman Democratic Party speaks for young people. We speak for young people demanding an education and a future. We speak for senior citizens. We speak for senior citizens who are terrorized by the idea that pension is not enough to sustain them. and recognize that at the heart of the matter, we are bound one to another. That the problem of a retired school teacher is our problem. That the struggles of a disabled man to survive and live decently is our struggles. That the hunger of a woman and children is also our hunger. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not in this race to hold an office, but to gather together with you to transform this country. I want to win the next battle for justice, opportunity, and equality. I want to win the next battle for an improved education system, better jobs, better health care, jobs of job security for Caymanians. I want to take up the unfinished business of protecting, perfecting our country and building a better Cayman. <laughs> Together, starting today, let us finish the work that needs to be done and usher in a new birth of unity and togetherness. That is why on May the 24th, I would like you to vote straight and vote CDP. In Bordentown West, vote number one, Stafford Berry, because my ambitions are rooted in the principle that tomorrow must be better than today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you and good night. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Okay, next up we have Mr. Dennison Tibbetts coming in from the constituency of Red Bay. Give it up for Mr. Tibbetts. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for the wonderful, the wonderful way you have followed us in, in, in that uh, motorcade. All of us got wet, but it was a joyful wet. And as, as, as our illustrious MC said, it's a blessing from above. And here I am again asking you to vote for the CDP and to vote for me in Red Bay. Number three. As you are all aware, there are three candidates running in Red Bay, but number three is the one you need to vote for. Just put your X. Just, just look for me, the bald-headed guy with the, with the white beard. I'm humbly asking to be your next representative in the Legislative Assembly for that district, or for that constituency, I should say. Tonight, I will say a few words to explain how important this election will be. On May 24th, you, yes, you the people, have the power in your hands in making the right decision by placing your ex at the ballot box, not only for me, but for the entire CDP team. The time has come, ladies and gentlemen, for all of us to stand up and say enough is enough. For far too long, we have been suffering. Far too long, the rich have got richer and the poor have got poorer. On this podium tonight, there are, well, I was gonna say 11, but Jonathan, because of health, is not here. And I'm sure that many issues will be addressed. We were invited and chosen by our illustrious leader, the Honorable Makiva Bush. Not by chance, but as you well know, by our skills and our experiences. Each one of us has a vast history of accomplishments in one area or another, serving the people and the community in the Cayman Islands. Tonight, I'm sure you will hear about the problems we face, the economy, education, garbage disposal, agriculture, crews birthing, the health system and health insurance, 
Unemployment, immigration, social services, crime and police interaction, public transportation, cost of living, housing, tourism and hospitality, international relations and many other issues. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I chose to approach tonight in a different, with a different path. I want to talk a little bit about personalities for a change. There are three kinds of candidates that will be asking for your vote. Politicians affiliated to the People's Progressive Movement, politicians affiliated to the Cayman Democratic Party, and politicians seeking election with no affiliation to any party. They say they are independent, but they each have their own agenda, and so they'll tell you that they're independent. However, most of them are backed by one person financing these so-called independents. We, the 11 candidates before you tonight, including Jonathan, he's here in spirit, are part of the De Cayman Democratic Party, and we are all bound by a contract, politically called a manifesto. And if you don't have one already, then please get one before you leave this evening. The manifesto is our promise to you of what we will do when we are elected, and it is a promise bound by our honor. If we do not fulfill the obligations clearly stated on the manifesto, then vote us out of office in 2021. And ladies and gentlemen, I mean what I say. Some politicians trick, trick you and they man manipulate you, and they use all kind of loopholes in the election law to achieve their goals to be reelected. Of course, I'm sure you're already guessing that I'm talking about our premier, my opponent in Red Bay. For 16 years, he has been a candidate for Georgetown and has been reelected by the voters of Central Georgetown. This year, however, he realized that he cannot be voted in by the same constituents because of his known inaction and false promises. So he decided, and by the way, this is allowed by law, but not by morals, to run for a red bay. In Georgetown Central, he would have to face his past political assistant, Kenneth Bryan, and he certainly would have been defeated, because Mr. Bryan knows him very, very well. This is why I chose to talk about personalities rather than talk about the issues our beloved country is facing. But I will address them in my next meeting on Wednesday night, May 17th, at Lord's Way off Selkirk. My colleagues here will be very specific about solving the problems. We are a team, and I will be on board working with them. Ladies and gentlemen, character matters. Let me explain why I say that. A few years ago, it was very easy to hide failure, but in our present day environment, social media and fast information technology makes it easy to figure out if a politician has fulfilled the promises he has made or if he has not. Clearly, the, the People's Progressive Movement, who are now governing our fair Cayman Islands, they have failed and they have failed miser miserably. Just browse the inter internet and search their 2013 manifesto. They accomplished nothing. Only took credit for what the previous government had already done under our leader, the Honorable McKeever Bush. The Premier thinks that Red Bay voters do not have access to internet or that he can continue to play with the lives of the hard-working people of Red Bay. He thinks that running against a newcomer like me will ensure him victory. Red Bay, you people are not stupid. Some of them are calling him the runaway Alden. This country is too small for that. There's no way to hide who you are. Either you are effective or ineffective. And we know which one he has been for the last 16 years. There's a big difference between us. I am a man of action. I worked all my life and survived very well without any help from government. 
I am pledging to use my energy and resources to help make this country the best it can be. I hope that the day I step into my office of the government administration building, I will not find problems that have been hidden from the public because believe you me, I will expose any wrongdoing, no matter what it is. I am proud to be part of the Cayman Democratic Party, founded by a man like myself, a man of action. Mr. McKeever Bush has dedicated 32 years of his life to this country and is the one responsible for most of the development you see on these islands. Example, the Ritz-Carlton, Cayman Enterprise City, City, Art Group, really too many to detail during this short speech. I will tell you what my opponent, the Premier, declared himself shortly after he declared himself a candidate spoken about the community being upset with the cars speeding in the area. And you know what he did? Immediately he orders public, work, public works to install speed bumps on the streets in Red Bay. I say congratulations, Mr. Premier, for doing in five days what you didn't do in the entire four years previously. Maybe he will get three more votes for that, but that will not help him. So vote CDP all the way. And remember Red Bay, number three, Deniston Tibbet. So ladies and gentlemen, we are all fired up, and we ask humbly that you vote CDP all the way. And together we will make tomorrow better than today. Thank you all for being here tonight. God bless and God bless these Cayman Islands. Thank you, Mr. Tibbetts. Before we move on, I did just want to kind of mention on a, touch, a point that Mr. Dennison did touch on, and that is the voting this year. This is the very first year that we're introducing the one man, one vote. So folks, you have one opportunity to get it right. Um, in the newspapers this week and on social media, there will be um, some b imitation ballots going out. It'll show you kind of what to expect when you go out on um, election day. It's going to have the candidate's number, their name, if they're affiliated with any party, or if they're independent, and also a little box where you're going to put your X. So make sure that... This is the first time we're doing one man, one vote, so you put one X for the candidate that you think is CDP, okay? So you're gonna look for that symbol. Where's the Cayman Democratic Party sign? That's the one you're gonna find, big C, and you put the X right there next to it. Now I said this, a small X. I said this in my last meeting, and lo and behold, when you see those candidates' pictures, there's gonna be some that you're gonna want to cross out Maybe draw horns on, but please don't be doing that because you're going to spoil your ballot. Okay, and we can't have any spoiled ballots. We want Cayman Democratic Party all the way. All right, up next we have Miss Teresa Bodden, Miss Tessa, and she's running for the constituency of Georgetown East. Miss Tessa. Thank you, Jennifer. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here with us. Next Wednesday, May the 24th, we all go to the polls to vote for the next government of the Cayman Islands. The vote you cast must be for the CDP candidate in your constituency. And I will tell you why. A CDP government will serve everyone equally by caring for and protecting the people of Cayman through good, inclusive, and transparent policies. We will ensure that Caymanians have equal opportunities in Cayman by creating an inclusive database of jobs available and persons unemployed or underemployed 
and providing proper training for them to access available jobs. We will provide for our poor and vulnerable by ensuring their access to community assistance. We will insist that good health care is available to all by assessing our current health care facilities and ensuring that people are able to access care and medications when they are in need of medical assistance. A CDP government will protect and preserve our environment so that our beauty and natural resources can be enjoyed for generations to come. We will promote and preserve our history and culture so that these are not lost in our cultural diversification and economic advancement. We will protect our small businesses and our financial industry so that jobs are available to all Caymanians who need employment. We will build stronger communities by involving community leaders in plans being put forward in their areas as well as assessments of need in each community. And we will ensure that good education is available to everyone in Cayman. Education is the driver to access the benefits of businesses operating here, both local and foreign. They all need employees. And in them providing employment, we get incomes to keep a roof over our heads, food on the table, and enough money to take care of our families. In order to ensure that this happens, our education system needs to be assessed and upgraded. Where facilities are needed, these must be provided. Where facilities need upgrading, they must be upgraded. Where more teachers are needed, they must be hired. Where the curriculum needs to be diversified to meet the needs of all students, it must be diversified. We must provide our people with the facilities for lifelong learning. Our preschools, our primary schools, our middle schools, and our high schools need to offer education that will equip our students for living and working in this country. The education we offer must allow our students to access jobs that are available here. In addition, our unemployed must be able to get the education they need to give them work-ready skills. Our, our prisoners need skills that will allow them to find employment when they leave northward. And those adults who wish to upgrade their education to access better jobs or allow them to go back into the workplace should have this opportunity. And finally, our schools must be places of safety, of cultural diversity, of support, of team building skills, as well as places of education. And students, whenever possible, must participate in community activities and have access to work experience. The same way it takes a village to raise a child, so too does it take an entire country working together to prov provide a bright future for generations to come. That is the resolve of the Cayman Democratic Party, and that is why you must vote CDP next week Wednesday. I thank you all, and God bless. Thank you, Ms. Tessa. Who are we voting for in Georgetown East? Ms. Tessa.
Okay, we have nine days away from elections, people. So get ready, because change is coming. Tomorrow must be better than today. Up next from Georgetown South is Mr. Mike Adam. Please welcome Mr. Adam to the stage. Let's make some noise, Georgetown South. Let me hear you. Okay, I hear you. All right. Button down. West Bay. All of Georgetown. Everybody. Thank you, Jennifer. Good evening, Cayman. Good evening, ladies and gen gentlemen. And thank you all again, those who supported our motorcade this afternoon. I think uh, we made quite an impression on the Capitol in particular, and I know West Bay did their job as well as Bodentown. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely fired up and ready to go. Only nine days to make Cayman better than today when you elect the Cayman Democratic Party as your new government. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, our country has come, come to a very serious crossroads. And now you have the power to change the political landscape of Cayman. It is in your hands, folks. With a stroke of a pen, vote straight for every CDP member in Bodentown, Georgetown, and West Bay. As we have said time and time again, when you elect us to be your voice in the Legislative Assembly, there are several things we will do to ensure that your needs are met day in and day out across these islands. You've heard it from us before. You're hearing it from my colleagues again this evening. First of all, we plan to propose new legislation that will invest more tax funds in our public schools. You've just heard Ms. Tessa talk extensively about the plans for our public schools, not only to meet the needs of today, but to encourage developing minds for the future. Such new funding would be used to hire and retrain quality teachers, make renovations, particularly in John Gray High School, and revamp and introduce new curriculum programs to ensure our children's success. On the campaign trail just uh, Friday, I met a teacher who really opened my eyes to the disgusting situation that still exists at John Gray High School. The school is still operating with 10 temporary classrooms that I understand were only intended for five years. The CDP will make John Gray a priority. You can hold me, Mike Adam, responsible. It is in Georgetown South. I find it hard to believe an amazing, a major project that was started by the PPM some 12 years ago has not been addressed and completed in this term. That's the John Gray High School. Another example of how much they do not care about us, about our children. To accomplish this, we are proposing a new education fund and also rechanneling some of our existing revenue to meet these demands. We must make education our first priority as the future of our people, our country deserves it. This government, the PPM, has failed our children once again, ladies and gentlemen, and what we must demand a change. The power is in your pen. My colleague, Deniston, just spoke about speed bumps. We brought this to the forefront in some of our speeches. I'm sure it's not only in, in the Red Bay area, you've seen them pop up just overnight. I was in Windsor Park 
in the south of Georgetown. They're all over the place putting in speed bumps now. Why has it taken four years? Why do we have garbage all over our neighborhoods piling up for collection only once a week? Simply because they cut the budget. It used to be twice a week, and I can promise you it will return to a frequency twice a week once you elect the CDP. Something as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen, they don't have the vision. I don't think they really walk the streets like we have and seen the mess that this makes and creates. Secondly, economic development is on the minds of most of you, particularly with regard to our downtown area. For the past four years, economic prosperity has been neglected by current, the current government leaders, and the CDB plans to change all of that. We are proposing Georgetown, a real revitalization project that would promote new and existing businesses by allowing a lower cost in operations, bringing more family-oriented activities to downtown Georgetown, and creating more open areas for our visitors and residents to relax and enjoy. Thirdly, we are proposing a better public transport system to meet the growing demands of better and more efficient transportation for years to come. This current PPM administration has lacked, once again, no vision of long-term solutions, preferring to take a look, look and see approach. Such a short-sighted stance fails to consider the needs of future generations our children, your children, and our grandchildren. The CDP government doesn't want to be remembered for a road we built today, but for a more visionary government that gets the job done. We have the solutions and are ready and able to implement them. When elected, I promise to once again give, once again, give my all to my elected position and make sure your issues and concerns are fully addressed at the local and national level where necessary. I have not lost touch with the everyday needs and concerns of our day-to-day -day and our people. I'm a simple man with a God-fearing heart and soul which pushes me daily to be, do better for those who cannot do for themselves. I am my brother's keeper. In closing, ladies and gentlemen, I say to you, vote CDP and let us take action. Let CDP take action in creating jobs where there are none and where there are jobs we will create internships. Let the CDP take actions that will make people happy. Let the CDP take actions that will preserve and save our environment. Let the CDP take actions that will make people healthy. Let the CDP take actions in education, not only for your children, but for you as well. Cayman, let us, the CDP, take bold actions so that our children and our children's children can look back and say, I'm glad they took bold moves on this and to ensure our future. So friends, once again, on Wednesday, May the 24th, please vote in Georgetown for Perlina McGaw-Lumsden, number two, Georgetown North. Deniston Tibbetts, number three, Red Bay. Teresa Bodden, Georgetown East, number one. Jonathan Percy, Georgetown West. And yours truly, Mike Adam, Georgetown South. The CDP has the plans and solutions, but we must have you to work with us. If you stand by us, rest assured that together we will make tomorrow better than today. Thank you again for being here with us tonight, and may God bless each and every one of you and these beloved Cayman Islands. Good night.
Thank you, Mr. Adam. And he is right, Caymanians. Caymanians have always been Cayman kind, and we have always been our brother's keepers. Folks, we have an obligation, not just for those of us here tonight, but for our children, our grandchildren, even our aging parents. We have to vote Cayman Democratic Party to take this country back. No longer can we sit back and suffer, suffer in silence. These good folks up here have stepped up to the plate. They want to fight for us. They want to be our voice. We need to help them help you. Tomorrow must be better than today. Up next, we have Ms. Perlina McGall Lumsden representing the constituency of Georgetown North. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me hear you, Georgetown North. Let me hear you, Georgetown. Okay, you can do better than that. West Bay? <laughs> Where are my bottom towners? And let's try this again. George Towners, where are you at? Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules for spending this time with us. Personally, I would like to take the time to say thank you to the people of Georgetown North for welcoming me in your homes over the past few weeks. And we know the challenges are great, but I know that together we can, we can achieve the impossible. I truly have heard your cries and I've enjoyed reminiscing with you all. And I ask for continued prayers and support as the election is now nine days away. In nine days, repeat it please. Let me hear you say it, in nine days, you, the people of the Cayman Islands can make history and set the tune for a better future. As you vote for CDP, trusted people, people who can carry your dreams and the hopes forward, who will work tirelessly to improve your families, our homes, and create opportunities for our children and our young people, and thus bring about the legacy we want to leave for the next generation. We all know the issues, education, unemployment, inadequate health insurance, foreclosures, and the list goes on. But please know that I stand here with you tonight, very committed to you and your dreams, and in bringing solutions to the many issues that this country faces, as tomorrow must be better than? That is my mandate a better tomorrow for you and for all of us. To bring change, I encourage every single one of you to vote and to vote for Cayman Democratic Party. And for Georgetown North, vote for the candidate that will not just show up every four years with a ham and a turkey, but vote for someone who genuinely cares and will bring a better tomorrow for you and your children. Ladies and gentlemen, on May 24th, I ask that you vote in Red Bay for Mr. Denison Tibbetts, Georgetown East for Mrs. Tessa Bodden, Georgetown West for Mr. Jonathan Percy, Georgetown South for Mr. Mike Adam, and Georgetown North for yours truly, Perlina McGaw Lumsden. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, and God bless you. Thank you, Miss Perlina. As Beyonce says, who run the world? Girls. Who run the world? Girls. Girls. All right. So you know who you got to vote for in Georgetown North. Up next, we have Mr. John Jefferson Jr., and he's coming from West Bay South. Thank you, Jennifer, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
this has been a good day. Amen. We started in West Bay around 3 o'clock this afternoon. We had something like 89 and 90 cars, and they were all packed, so we, it's probably over three or 400 people. Ladies and gentlemen, I want tonight to promote hope. Hope. In nine days, in nine days, there's going to be a tremendous change in this country. When the, the Cayman Democratic Party candidates are elected as a, as a whole, we got 11 candidates. We want 11 elected members from the Cayman Democratic Party. You see, what, what that does, ladies and gentlemen, it ensures that we are in a position where we, are, we have control, we have the majority that we can form the next government. The Honorable McKee Bush can become the next premier, as he rightfully should be. And he will have a team that will work with him on a daily basis to turn around the issues in this country. There's many issues. In West Bay, I, you know, I'm responsible for West Bay South. I go around, I visit. There are many issues. But you know, when we sit and you talk to people and you tell them, you do what you're supposed to do and we're going to do what we're supposed to do, all of a sudden there's hope. There is hope. And ladies and gentlemen, I am confident that come next Wednesday, the 24th of May, there is going to be a tremendous outreach tremendous support as far as our part is concerned and the, the candidates you see on this, this platform will be your new elected representatives for the next four years. You know, this is the first time that we can run under the one mind, one vote system. But ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you what I told the people in West Bay. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. You still have your vote. You can still vote a team. Okay, what you do, wherever you are registered, make sure you check, check, make sure you know where you're registered. Check to see where you have to vote on May 24th. And when you go in there, you just look for the Cayman Democratic Party candidate in your area, and you mark your X for them. That's all it is. Simple. Simple. And... Once you do that, ladies and gentlemen, around 7 o'clock on Wednesday night, the, the count will start. It'll probably last two or three hours. But you will have your representatives. You would know who they are before the end of the night. Okay? And I promise you, we are a team of action. I have mentioned more than once, it looks like the last four years, the, the Cayman Islands were on automatic pilot. Nobody in charge. Nobody in charge. Try calling one of those ministers. They never return your call. They never take your call. They, and the, 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 the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, we are not important enough for them. They are there only for the special interest groups. Okay? They don't care about the, the common Caymanian. They don't. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the secret that we have always enjoyed, why we have always enjoyed what we did in this country. We have always, regardless of what we were doing as a Caymanian, you could always make a living to support yourself and your family. We have probably 29, 129, 130 different nationalities working and living among us. We live in harmony, and that is unusual. That is unusual. We have an excellent situation here in the Cayman Islands. We have to continue to enjoy that, you know? But we, it takes work. We gotta address the issues. Everybody has to be, be treated fairly, okay? And I promise you that we will do our best to turn around the, the, the issues and we deal with it. We address the issues that we are faced with in this country. We have lost hope. We have lost hope in this country. So I want to promote hope for the next four years when you elect the Cayman Democratic Party.
you know, it's amazing. Some people, they don't show up till a couple of weeks before election. I know in West Bay. <laughs> I, I, I hear, I, I'm visiting a, one of my constituents the other day, and he said, you know, John, <laughs> your opponent showed up here. And I said, where, where have you been for the last four years? Why come see me now? He said, he, he told, I said, you know something? You are just like the, all the other politicians. Only need you or know you when you need you around election time. We are going to be there for the four years, ladies and gentlemen. When you need us, you're going to be able to reach us by telephone. We're going to be in the office so that you can come there and sit and we can dis discuss your issues and we'll find a solution because there's no excuse. There is no excuse for our elected representatives for not being available. They are full-time representatives. They are, they are there to serve you, the people, okay? So I pledge for you, to you this evening that if you do your part, and what I mean by that is that you elect the, the 11 Cayman Democratic Party candidates throughout this country. Our four in West Bay, they're secure. I'm gonna tell you that right now. They are secure in West Bay. They are secure in West Bay. They're not moving behind the bush. They're not moving Captain Eugene E. Banks. They're not moving the Honorable McKeever Bush. And they're certainly not gonna prevent me from getting my seat. Okay? George Stone, I expect the same thing. I expect the same thing. I want Perlina McGaw in the North to be elected. I want Tassin East to be elected. I want Mike in the South to be elected. I want Jonathan in the West to be elected. You know, and, and Red Bay want Deniston, okay? In Bordentown, East we want Robert Borden. And in West we want Stafford Berry. We want the whole team. Once you do that, ladies and gentlemen, you will be on the right track. We will be then in a position where we can restore hope. We can restore dignity. And we can uh, restore confidence in a government to run this country. Thank you, ladies and, ge ladies and gentlemen, and good night. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Now you heard what he said, you have to do your part. Who are we voting for? Who? One more time. All right, up next we have Captain Eugene Ebanks coming out of West Bay Central. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know, after such a rainy start, it, it is so great to see such a fantastic turnout. We, we cannot thank you enough for your support. You are a phenomenal audience. Phenomenal. We thank you so, so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not, I'm not one for, known for major speeches in the first place, but tonight I just want to say we're here to make tomorrow better than today. That's what this crew is here about. Now they, they, you know, they said, we always preach, vote straight. What? Yes, vote straight. Vote straight for the United Cayman Democratic Party. No matter where you are, vote for the Cayman Democratic Party. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, each and every member of this team has your best interest at heart. We're asking for your vote, no matter what district you're voting in, vote for the Cayman Democratic Party candidates. There again, vote straight, no matter where you are. In West Bay West, Honorable McKeever Bush. West Bay North, Mr. Barney Bush. 
West Bay South, John Jefferson, Jr. And in West Bay Central, yours truly, Captain Eugene. Ladies and gentlemen, it is great. We must change this government. When we're depending on your, your ex, your vote, that's the only thing that can change it. You're sitting at home or not, come, or, or not voting for the right people, we won't change anything. And I know from the amount of complaints I get daily, we have to, and what I have seen, we have to change this government. We have to make Cayman better than it is today. Just give us an opportunity to, to prove that we can make Cayman better than today. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you again. Please, please, we have nine days to go, nine short days. We're depending on your support. Please remember, vote straight, Cayman Democratic Party. Thank you so much. Thank you, Captain Eugene. You heard what he said, vote straight. So do not be fooled, do not be deceived by the other candidates out there saying that they're really CDP too, because they're not. The only CDP candidates are the ones you see sitting behind me. Up next, we have Bernie Bush from West Bay North. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Please stand, please. No. Thank you all very much. You see how you just followed instructions? You have nine days to go, follow the instructions. CDP, simple. Simple, CDP. Ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues, have covered everything from education, come down to jobs. What I'm going to do with my few minutes, I'm going to give you all a reminder. Under the last party that we had, that was headed by Mr. Bush, Mr. Mike Adams, and Captain Eugene. I wasn't there yet. Low income homes, that's another problem that we have Try to get our people into homes. Give them a part of the Cayman dream. Give them some kind of pride and ownership. Over 90 homes were built under that man, Mr. Mike Adams, <laughs> under the, with Ms. McKeever and, those and his crew. Ask the PPM how many they've built in the last four years. Not one. There are some homes sitting down empty that they could have helped some poor Caymanians family get into. Have they done it? No. Let's go back again, ladies and gentlemen. They keep trying to convince, the, uh, the, they think they're putting all the stuff on the radio that they're going to fool you all. All you have to do is to go to the government website, not a CDP website, the government website, which is their audited and everything. They took over the government broke and gave it to them with money. So how is it if you taken over the country with a surplus, you had to fix the country? You ask them, what revenue earning measures have you put in place in the last four years? You hear them talking about, oh, every time you look, they're at Shetty. Every time you look, they're at the Ritz. Every time you look, they're at the Kimpton. Who did that all those start under? Damn right you so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to immediately address an institution that is uh, just fit for people who are ment having mental problems. We have to address the mental issues that we're having in this country immediately, and we will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we hear some of these so-called independents, especially some of those down in the West, talking about all these grandiose ideas, these great ideas, but they never once can tell you where the money is going to come from. 
And money is not growing on trees, ladies and gentlemen. You have to be smart. We don't have to build new schools. All we have to do is put programs in the schools that the complaints that you all come to us and say, I applied at this hotel. And the people who are telling me this are people who want to work, people who can work, people who have worked, and they have not even gotten an answer. Guess what? We will put an immigration board in place that will address these issues that will make you get back to work and get jobs that will pay you. We are going to put vocational programs, plumbing, electrical, and all masonry, carpentry. And here's something that you've never heard before. We're going to build more low-income homes. And do you know how we're going to build more? We're going to keep the cost of building them low. How? A lot of the young men and women who go to our vocational programs are the people who are going to go and work and help build those low-income homes. Simple. You never heard it before. You heard it here tonight. Another thing that we have to look at, ladies and gentlemen, is our elders. Now, no one, no one can sit down with the track record that that man behind there and that big green shirt has on when it comes to for his elderly people. No one. And here's what. We now have to look for our elders, places to go, and things for them to do. We have to keep their minds active. They have to go and hang out with their friends, sit down and talk. We will put those programs in place as quickly as possible. Another thing that I'm going around and visiting the people that we found out is we have a lot of single mothers trying really hard with a lot of deadbeat fathers and nothing is being done about it. We will address it. Single mothers, we will fight for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you all know you all are not fools. Ladies and gentlemen, we have people, we have, sorry, we have powers on the outside that want to threaten our godliness, want to threaten our, threaten our culture. You need people who are going to be able to stand up and fight. Like when they told him, go home and tax the people, he said, not on my watch. They told him, fire 500 people, he said, not on my watch. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the kind of leader you want, not the type of leader that who's been running in Central all his life and then run from Kenneth and go on somewhere else and run. No, you don't want that kind of leader. You want a leader to stand up and fight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, not today, Bobo. Not today. Ladies and gentlemen, like I told them, if you listen to me when I was on the forum, you have all these walk robbers saying, but I this, I that. I this, guess what? It's not one I inside that LA building. It's we, it's us, and it's we, us, the CDP. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I ask one question. Has the last four years, has your life improved? Yes or no? I no. what? Has your life improved in the last four years? No. Tomorrow must be better than today. You have it right here. Vote the CDP. And thank you all and God bless. Good job, thank you, Mr. Bernie. Up next, we, we have a speech, but it's not from a politician or, or a candidate, sorry. It's from a real fighter. And can anyone guess who that is? Can I call Charles the Killer Whitaker to the stage? Charles Whitaker, are you here? Here he comes. Give it up for the best fighter these islands have ever seen next to Mr. Bush. Gentlemen, ladies. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How you all doing tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I was here with you 12 years ago when I told you, don't vote for the PPM. Four years ago, I told you, don't vote for the PPM. 
Here I am again tonight telling you don't vote for the PPM. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for tomorrow to be better than today, you are going to have to be wiser this four years, this May, than you were May of 2013. You see, ladies and gentlemen, they don't care about you. They simply don't care about you. And don't you write them off as fools. That would be giving them a pass. They're not fools. The laws and methods and things that they have been doing, they know what they're doing. They have been well planned, well orchestrated, well thought out. They are here to serve a particular group, and you ain't in it. You don't count. They think that you are nothing but a bunch of ignorant fools that they could come back in 2017 and tell you the same things they told you they would do for you in 2013. In 2017, they come back and say, vote for us, we'll fix education. Well, let me remind you, one of the first things they did when they took office in 2013 was to kick Caymanian children out of universities. Some of them had as little as three and six months left to go. In 2013, they told you, we'll build trade schools. There was Superior Auto. There was the Alan Moore Electrical Trade School. They killed those programs. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a government, the PPM, is out of touch. They don't walk among you. You are only relevant to them come May 24th. That is the only time you matter. And I am here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that is the only time that you matter to them. But it's not true. You do matter. You do count. Your future counts, the future of your children and grandchildren unborn matters. But they don't matter to the people progressive movement. I wonder why they call themselves progressive. All we have seen is regression. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if tomorrow is going to be better than today, you need to go to the polls and elect a group of people that are going to work for you, the CDP. Ladies and gentlemen, on this platform, we have the kind of leadership that is always, they say a team is only as good as its leadership. On this platform, we have the kind of leadership that has always worked for the little man in this country. That is why he is so disliked, because he won't forget about you. And everybody on this platform knows and understands and shares the same ideals that he shares, and that is that you matter, you count. So when the PPM comes around now telling you what they're going to do for you, ask them where they've been for the last four years. Why didn't they do it four years ago? Ladies and gentlemen, to slap in your face, to show up now and tell you, Elect us, we'll fix unemployment. They had four years to fix it. They didn't fix it. In fact, I'll tell you what they did. I'll remind you what they did. One of the other first moves they made was to fix the rollover policy so that the expats, the people for whom they have been working for in this country, you see, they've only been working for a small percentage of you, a, a, a small percentage of us, a privileged few of us, but they certainly have been working to enhance the lifestyle and the, and the life, the economic life of the white expat community in this country, they have forgotten you. You don't matter to them, ladies and gentlemen. That is who they've been working for. No, no, how many of you that your life is better today than it was four years ago? Ladies and gentlemen, up to tonight I was meeting someone who told me, standing right over there, that this is the worst he has had it in his life. I know other people who have told me they have never had it. Many other people who have told me they have never had it as bad. Ladies and gentlemen, the PPM, they're not mistaken. They're not making mistakes. I told you that before. It's not that they don't know what they're doing. 
They know what they're doing. They know what they were doing when they had the expats, the same people who are working to keep Caymanians out of the legal profession, write the legal practitioner's bill, and then bring it down to the LA and try to pass it. Ladies and gentlemen, these are not, they don't care about you. How much plena can they show it to you folks? You know, I am disheartened that we are even having to have a campaign. This should be a slam dunk based on the performance of the People Progressive Movement. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, Alden McLaughlin himself told you in 2013 that he not fit to be reelected. Remember when he said he was so proud of young Kenneth Bryan and it didn't matter how much education you had if you didn't have the ability to care and to be concerned about others, you were not a good leader. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The man told you, he showed you. He had four years, and they have showed you in that four years that they don't care about you. They don't care about your tomorrow. They are here for a privileged few. They are out of touch, ladies and gentlemen. They, they come back to you and say, We'll fix the, I heard that they were going around asking people about their struggles with their home. Imagine, I seem to remember seeing, is it the Minister of Finance, Marco Archer? Yes. The Minister of Finance, Satan, criticizing the leader of this campaign, this platform, and the members who ran with him who were with him during the last administration for having the heart, the conscience, the goal to say, I am going to try to help my Caymanian people keep their homes. They criticized him for it. I remember Mr. Archo, the finance minister, criticizing Mr. Bush for that. And then he gets elected and he says, government is not in the business of helping people keep their homes. But as I said before, he took $500,000 and gave to some people in another country to help them restore their homes. You see, ladies and gentlemen, they, were not, they are not entirely against helping people keep their homes. They are simply against you having a home. They are against you having a roof, a place to lay, to lay your head when night comes, to keep the dew off the heads of your children. That is what they're against. They're not against helping people. They're just against helping the Caymanian people. Ladies and gentlemen, if tomorrow is going to be better than today, I said it before, you're going to have to be wiser. Go to the polls. Vote for our CDP candidates. This has always been, any party that Mr. Bush has been a part of has always been a government for the people, by the people, and with the people. And Mr. Bush himself has been a man of the people, for the people, and with the people. A man for whom played in simply his magic lies and his people ties. Folks, I'm not going to take too much time. I am going to leave you with this. And don't, hold, don't, don't blame them for this. I'm going to say this. They can take it up with me. The difference between Hitler and the PPM administration is Hitler used a gas chamber. They are trying to produce the same results, but with a pen, which in my mind makes them even more diabolical than Hitler because it will prolong the suffering and the pulverization. Pulverization and suffering of who? You, the Caymanian people, and your children. Ladies and gentlemen, reject them. Reject them come May 24th. For tomorrow to be better than today, you must participate. Go out to the polls and let's vote them out. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out. Have a good night. God bless. Thank you, Charles, but I, I have to disagree with you. I don't think we want a slam dunk come May 24th. We want a TKO. Yay! All right. From one great fighter to the next, he's a hard man for dead. Coming out of the West, from the green and blue corner, the undefeated, the undisputed champion of the Cayman Islands, the People's Premier, the Honorable Mr. McKeever Bush, up next.
Madam Chairman, I want to thank you for that very nice welcome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to this rally tonight. This has been a long day, but it's a good day. It started with my wife kicking me out of bed. She said, you have to get up. You're going to a prayer breakfast. And I got up, and I went to a prayer breakfast this morning at All Nations United Pentecostal Church. And what a powerful morning it was. And then, I had to see some constituents at home. And guess what? I had to be more than careful because in the recent days, the government has put up a CCTV camera right in the corner of my yard. So anybody that comes to my yard and comes to my front door will now have their photo taken in the governor's office, in the commissioner's office, or somewhere paying attention to what they should not be paying attention to. So this was a good day. Oh, they're watching me. Let them watch. After I seen my constituents, it was time to go to prepare for our motorcade. And I've been having a motorcade and been involved in a motorcade in West Bay since 1972. So I'm not, I am not proposing a motorcade just for so. It's a cultural, political animal with us and we make it successful. And this afternoon, as the hundreds rolled in, God sent his showers upon us. And some people came to me and said that Daphne Orit had prayed against us so it rained. I said, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Her prayers don't go that far. Not today, Bobo. The showers of blessing came down. And 215 cars came out. Well, some of us don't like rainy weather, so we go back home. But I'm thankful for all of you from Bordentown, from Georgetown, and from West Bay that came and had this cultural, political event called a motorcade. And I'm hearing some good friends from East End was there. Ladies and gentlemen, our colleagues has told you what needs to be done. But one of the things that must be done is that the PPM must go. Must go. Their immigration policy stinks. Thousands of people are eligible. And what are they doing? Nada. Nada. And they're going to court. So what do you think is going to happen? The floodgates will be open. There is no real housing policy or results. And although Mr. Kurt Tibbetts cut tail and run, Tells the people, don't vote for them because they're with Mikiwa. I will tell the people, don't vote for the PPM because Kurt Tibbetts have done nothing. There is no housing. 
Crime is increasing by the day. There is no week now that there is not a gun crime. Ladies and gentlemen, I have always been a good beating stick because I speak out. They will always curse me and accuse me and say all manner of evil against me because I stand up. I have tried to help you in many, many different ways. The PPM are a bunch of hypocrites. They need to go back wherever they come from. If our lady from Prospect, send them back. If Marco Archer is down here to bear, send him back. If the little girl from, from Bordentown West is wherever she's from, send her there too. <laughs> send them back. Joey Hill, well, he grew up in West Bay. I was his Sunday school teacher at one point, but he didn't come to Sunday school. He stayed down in Loren Bay kicking skill pots. <laughs> Send them back. Send them back. And so, the whites, they only can complain about McKeever Bush. That's all right. I don't need no gas. I guess it in West Bay. Send them back. What is the next one? This is the next one. And poor old Ozzy in the east. I then saw him along the road and say, You a piece of your food? I taking your mystery. And Barbara, my good friend, she gone to run against Mike and she allows Mike to death and Mike will put her out and the people will say, go back to where you come from. Yeah. And we in pattern, oh Jesus, oh Lord. He want to take you back to the 1940s so that you can chase the cows and cut the grass piece, iron the clothes, and he be the kingpin. Not today, Bobo. Time done. Time done. Time done. Time for the PPM to go. And poor old Lulu, she said, oh, you don't want me, but I will come still run. And she gone up prospect to campaign and run by herself. And so as soon they couldn't get nobody else, they went and looked for poor old Lulu. And now Lulu is kind of loon loon. She's getting beat too. That's them? And so that is the PPM all over. They got somebody on the north side, can't cut the cake. They got an independent in West Bay who says she's not PPM. But ladies and gentlemen, she walked with them, she went and walked with them, she walks like them, she talks like them. And so, if you walk like a duck, and talk like a duck, and look like a duck, and act like a duck, then you're a duck. She is PPM. And she alone, she alone has condoned what I have just said. Immigration policy stinks. There is no housing. Blame Tara. Our people are losing their business because of red tape. Blame Tara. 
There is increasing gun crime by the day. Fosters rob. Gas station rob. Woman got her handbag stole. Tourists got robbed. Woman walking get knocked down. Bleem Tara. Because she is the glue that has helped the PPM stay together. Mr. Anthony Eden is a gentleman, a hard worker, even though he don't speak. I put him in the category of Captain Eugene because they are quiet, but they work. I can tell the world they work. He left them. Mr. Alva Saku, he left them too. Tara Rivers, the glue that held them together stayed with them. If you talk like a duck, if you quack like a duck, if you act like a duck, speak like a duck, then you are a duck. And so Tara Rivers must be put out with the PPM. She is not a true independent. Ladies and gentlemen, I know they like to talk about McKeever, but Kurt is still doing it. But guess what? I'll tell my good friend Kurt. When I was warning them that the crisis in the United States was upon us in 2006 and 2007, and that we were going to lose, you know what he said? Poor old Kurt. He said, not on the kindest of Sundays would I listen to you. And then Lehman Brothers fell the next day. And poor old Kurt, when the newspapers say, what, what are you going to do? Poor old Kurt, eh? He say, ah, we only going to lose about $200,000. Oh, yeah? $200,000, huh? He didn't see the impact of what was going to happen to all of the plans they made and the hundreds of millions of dollars they had contracted. He didn't see that. He didn't see the world economy losing ground. No, he didn't. Well, poor old McKeever, who went nowhere else but secondary modern school, and they kicked me out because they had no more space. I saw it. And I said, trim your sails. Cut your budget. This can't work. And Curtis, who now tells people, well, they're along with McKee, well, like, they're not supposed to be, and it's the worst thing in the world. Poor old Kurt. Poor little Kurt. Yeah. He said, this is not going to hurt us. We lose about $200,000. Ladies and gentlemen, I study long. I work hard. I stay up late at nights. And never mind but we go dancing in here. I love to dance. Don't worry about social media. You tell them that my joints are glued together. And when I hear good Caribbean music, I like to dance. But I study. I study and never once have I failed the people of my country. I stood up to the legs in the United Kingdom and I will continue to do so. Now they want to come and talk about, like, it's some pariah? You tell them that I say, don't start. Don't start. My 32 years, not for nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to win. You have to make it happen. Or all the things that I am telling you. And don't, don't, even, don't even look at these copycats. They couldn't put out a manifesto till everybody has theirs out. Now they come and saying, what they said in 2013 couldn't work. And I'll tell you one. To protect our borders, I wanted to create some sort of national guard, some sort of national defense. They said, nah, you don't want that. That's a fool. Don't listen to him. Look at their manifesto. Yeah, well, what do you expect? 
Look at it. They are copycats. They have no ideas of their own. The only plan they have is like what Moses Kakonal done in the brack. Get me and support me to move a motion to give him two. Marinas. But the Dilbert family who put their own Caymanian money, oh, we passed the motion, but he didn't do anything. That is the plan of the PPM. They are all for self. Ladies and gentlemen, you would be foo-foo to vote for them again. So, what are we going to do? Vote them out. Vote them out. We have 10 to 100 days after next week, Wednesday, when you kick them out. We are going to put in place the old people benefit. Now they copy that too, you know. This, I see poor little old Daphne down there singing out. Yeah, we do that too. Yeah, right. But when I proposed it and put it in place, they were the one cursing me. Now that I have said I'm going to bring it up to a thousand dollars strong, we will do that too. <laughs> Education has to be fixed once and for all, ladies and gentlemen. It's no time to fool around with our children's future. We have to take care of the curriculum. We have to take care of teachers. And education don't just mean John Gray High School or Clifton Hutter High School. We have to start at the community level and reach families and help families because that is where the problem starts in the community. And we are going to put in place a strong community development program that are going to help you and you and you put the social workers in the districts. Take Votech. Don't do what those hypocrites done. They, killed, they didn't have nothing and because we put it in place, they took it out of Superiorado. Stopped it. For two children had got the benefit of it. They still carry the name, that old Tar Rivers. Oh, they carry it but they have done nothing with it. But that's how we educate our children because we do know that not everyone is going to be a lawyer or a dentist or a doctor, but where they can do something with their hands and their minds, we allow them by helping them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Everything that we try to do, they have stopped. Or they try to throw a red blanket on it. And take credit for it. Look at Health City. Look at what Health City is doing to bring down the cost in this country. People from all over the world are coming to Health City. And getting cheaper treatment. Oh, well, they're going to. There's a, a short video about Health City. And we can't deal with it all because it's getting late and tomorrow's work. The last three years, I've been suffering with what started as moderate to severe osteoarthritis in the right hip. Um, last year, around this time, I could no longer walk on my own. Um, decided that I would go to a private primary care clinic in Edmonton. Got on to what in Canada is uh, a list for this type of surgery and this type of service. Um, I got on the list in September. It took till January before I was accepted into that hip and knee clinic for triage. Uh, triage appointment was five minutes long and um, they didn't really do anything except for to say, yes, you're a candidate for surgery. 
Um, I expected to um, be assigned to a surgeon in April and called in April and was summarily told that they absolutely had never said that and that I wouldn't be seeing a surgeon until September. And I was beginning to get to the point where I could foresee that I might end up in a wheelchair. I was very much afraid that my other joints were gonna be implicated if I didn't hurry up and fix this problem. Um, and I began to do research. One clinic in Canada that was private, I looked at Belgium, I looked at France, um, the States was just too expensive. I simply couldn't afford. Um, one day I was on the internet doing some research on my own and I came across Health City. And it looked, uh, it looked really pretty wonderful. Um, so I began to, again, get some help in vetting Health City. Nicola from the Hamilton office and she was so great so good at pointing me in, in the right direction in terms of getting me information, um, connecting with my clinic to obtain test results, etc., to begin um, essentially a, a, a pre-vetting phase for me to be a candidate for surgery down here. What clinched it was a one-hour conversation with Dr. Alwyn Ambita, uh, the senior orthopedic surgeon who had no commitment from me no contract, nothing. Mm -hmm. And he talked to me mm -hmm. for an hour and a half, answered every question. Uh, I had questions, of course, being the, the type of patient that wants to prescribe what the surgeon's going to do. That was it. I thought, okay, this is so wonderful that I can actually talk to a medical professional who respects the fact that I have questions. Unbelievable. Uh, I felt really confident in the whole thing because we had checked everything out and uh, the clinic seemed to be very competent. The doctor was, blew us both away with his conversation, coming down to paradise for recovery after the operation and then seeing the uh, wonderful staff and, and facilities that they have. I'm totally blown away by the whole thing. And in fact, I'm recommending this to all of my friends. The staff were so customer service focused. I have never experienced so uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, they're talking about Health City. What they told me and what the PPM cursed me about and others. But the people from overseas can come here. Caymanians can come here. We have to make it more accessible to them. So we have to fix health insurance so that Caymanians can access quality health care. And the same way that I promised that we would get medical tourism here, we are promising that we're going to get a program of insurance that you can meet and still get good quality medical care. We gotta cut bureaucracy, ladies and gentlemen. When I went to England in 2012 to get the budget, because that's what I had to do after Alden and Kurt put us in such a mess. Four years, trot up to England, take a licks, beg, plead, and they might give you. But they told me. On the 7th of December 2012, we want beneficial ownership. We want you to recognize our legal and constitutional obligations to Europe and allow two things. Allow us to bring down the sentence from life to 13 years for serious murder. And allow us to live by our obligations. You have to live by it because you are our territory. To allow any same-sex union. And I say, sir. 
you sitting there and expect me to come up here and you haven't passed it and you haven't shown me a piece of paper and you want me to agree to that and sign that, I left my pen home. I left my pen home. The answer is not on my watch. The die I knew was cast for me, they came into my house on the 12th. But since then, the people... Pro yeah, the people provoking the key was simply... Put in place what they call beneficial ownership. They wanted me forever and A, every year, to change the confidentiality laws of this country. And I said, sorry, but I can't do that. I have no mandate. I do not think it's right for our island. I am not going to do it. Huh. Alden and Wien Patton and whomever else they dragged up there on the back seat of the jet, because that's where they say they went. You remember I told you I can't sit in the back seat. It's not so long. Sorry, Daphne, my bunk is too big. Can't go down there. But they dragged them up there and they signed the agreement to do away with our confidentiality laws. And they said, uh, well, we didn't do that, we're talking. But lo and behold, it came out on the FCO website where they had signed this agreement. And when I pulled the country's attention to it, we in part and said I was delusional. Well, I know I wasn't sleeping. I was wide awake and paying attention because I had went to the relevant sources to get the relevant information. I know of no other country in the world which has implemented such a system and most countries with a constitution which protects the right of individuals from this type of overreaching by the country, the state, would not be able to implement any such provisions without being in breach of their own constitution, their own human right bills, and the principles which have been developed over hundreds of years requiring due process prior to these types of powers being exercised. No country in Europe picked it up. No country in the Commonwealth, Australia, Canada, and most Commonwealth countries who respect the rights of citizens would not do it. France, who pushed the UK to do it, and the UK pushed us, has refused it themselves. And yet the PPM, in all their grandiose education, six Lawyers plus Tara has picked up and signed it, forgetting about the rights of the people. A document, an agreement, which was put forward by the previous ministers. This of government of in the government of the United Kingdom. The proposed legislation places not only our business people from international, but our citizens, you and you and you and your families, and our children in serious jeopardy of having this information being obtained by criminal elements with serious consequences, including kidnapping extortion and exposure of their personal information to persons who will use it for identity theft and other criminal enterprises. And when I pointed that out, I'm telling you the statement I made in the House. All we in pattern. And Alden McLaughlin, when he heard me reading it, he cut sticking right out of the House. We in pattern had to stay there to hear. 
But they said, no, 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 no. You're the fool. You don't know what you're talking about. These people can't go on computer and take this information. Oh, they can't? I have another video. What happened in the United Kingdom this week on cyberspace? And in Europe and other parts of the world, the biggest cyberspace attack, getting all information, shutting down systems. I hope the crew behind there can get it up on the screen. But that is the result of the kind of agreement that Wien Panton and Alden McLaughlin signed with the United Kingdom called Beneficial Ownership. And so, Mr. Aldon, it's all done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you can't be so naive to believe that this government is on your side. You cannot be that naive. I'm going to shut down at 10 o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to move the PPM. They have done enough damage already. You need to go next week, Wednesday, with a passion and vote them out. If you sit possibly by, they are going to send you down the river without a paddle. Time for them to go. You don't think so? You're losing your house. You're losing your car. You don't have no job. You can't pay your mortgage. And now, they are going after the international business because hedge funds operators and bankers here are already feeling the pinch and we are losing business and more and more employment is going to come. Understand what I say tonight, my dear friends. Well, Makiwa, how you know all of this? Because I've been in the midst of it. I've seen it. I've lived through it. I know what the PPM will do. And they will do it to you again and again and again. Move them. Not one seat for the PPM in this town. Not one seat for them in Bodden Town. Not one seat. Well, Paul came and back. We might get something out of it. We don't know. But let's say move them too. Don't fool yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. We have stuck by every agreement. We are better off than the two United States cities that are doing the same business. Yet, they do it. And with us, all done has allowed the beneficial ownership. Let me tell you, it's not good. People overseas are calling. Billion dollar hedge fund operators who have their trust, who have their business here. They do not want their children's name where ISIS can get it. You think they do? You think they're fool fool? You think they got a billion dollars by being stupid? Uh-uh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a change. Move the PPM now. I have already contacted Lord Panic, who's one of the best lawyers in the United Kingdom, member of the House of Lords, and we will challenge that in the first 100 days. We're going to cut bureaucracy. Pensions law. Alden lost 
200 million dollars between when I say he lost not him personally of course not but he was the minister of financial services responsible for pensions between 2005 and 2009 200 million dollars of your pension money was lost did you hear anything of it you didn't hear anything of it no 2005, 2009. Now, he wants to take the poor workers' pension and send them home and give them nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, what say ye? What say ye? He lost $200 million, said nothing, and now got a law pension law in place that will take the poor workers here well, where is your social conscience? What do you believe in? Are you going to say, well, it don't affect me, so I'm not worried? Well, I wasn't raised that way, Bobo. Give them the money. It is theirs, not ours. <laughs> Builders law. You can't build your own house now. Can you imagine? You got to go to one of their certified contractors. We don't know who he would be. Can't build your own house. Planning law. National conservation law. We believe in conservation. There has to be a balance. Everything in moderation. This country was more than 50% swamp. And a lot of it still exists. We have to save some of it. But I'm not going to take your land. And you can't do nothing for, for, for a lime lizard. No. The law has to be re revisited and changed. So that you and Caymanians who have some property that was left to them by their forefathers. Or they either borrowed money and built it. Must be saved. Change the law, and we are going to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, the garbage dump, $750 million. And they still don't have a plan to pick up your garbage more than once a week. Remember they cut it down from two days to one day? And the port. $300 million. Ladies and gentlemen, I call on Her Excellency the Governor, wake up and stop them because it's our Caymanian people. I stop the income tax. I stop the property tax. I stop the value added tax because I dare to tell the United States, not on my watch. Ain't gonna happen. And if they put in $1 billion and $50 million in two projects, who do you think is going to pay for it? And you're not worried? You want to be passive? Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you tonight, for your own good, pray and work hard. Tell your friends. Tell your mama. Tell your papa, tell your brothers and your sisters, your PPM must go. In 2008 and 2009, they were bragging like they're doing now with their red manifesto. The only time I saw more red than that was in China and Cuba and both for different reasons. They bring their manifesto now to tell you different. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2008 and 2009, they told me that they had a surplus. Oh, yeah? $80 million in deficit. And all sorts of contracts and mall ma piled up all over the place. Go down in Rock Hall, you still see some of it. Come down by the town hall, and you still some see some of it. And they say that they were better managers than the UDP. UDP built Prospect High Primary School for 15, less than $15 million. 
prospect. That's the kind of management. They build, up, they build post offices for over a million dollars. I take my old post office and fix it up for less than $400,000 and get as good results as them. And they want to tell me that I'm not going. Any day of the week, Mikiwa Bush is as good as them. Ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, we have to show the moguls in the brack that we are one and we believe in the brack and much needs to be done. Jobs, Fairness, we pay K man, they can say what they like, and this is not being disrespectful. It is because Moses, he won't talk about burning bush, he must be in some burning bush. <laughs> Moses do not want it changed because it's to their benefit. Jobs and fairness must come about in Cayman Brack. Closure of the Alexandra shows how they control. We must allow that hotel to open back up. Bring employment and opportunity to people by Caymanian family money that they put in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not favor. This is what needs to be done. You will love a Russian New York investor. Now they cost me about the, about the darts, right? Didn't they? Yeah, but what they done? They scooped them up and ran with them. But they are love a Russian investor. I have nothing against them, you know. Investors are investors. We work with them and get the best from them. But we're not getting the best. What is happening is no employment in the BRAC. Only work permits. So Moses didn't allow the Minister of Tourism, did not allow what we did in the house to go through. And that was do the marina to help the Alexandra. But he gave her Two. And afterwards, she bought a big old piece of land from him. If that were Mikiwa, you wouldn't visit me here tonight. You would visit me under the jail. You understand that? Yeah. Kisses go by favor in this country, and we have to break it up. Yeah. We have to break it up. We have to break up this 1940s attitude where they got, and people like us must be who take care of the cow, cut the grass piece, and iron the clothes. I said that, that's no disrespect. It's what existed then, and we were happy for employment, but today it is different. Caymanians invested their money, and they are stopping them. Time for change. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not as scared. I told my wife way back, they can come and knock on my door because I have nothing to be scared of. I will prove them wrong. But I will stand for my people and you, ladies and gentlemen, are my people. I don't care where you come from. If you are Honduran, you have connections here, you are made a citizen here, then you are my people. If you are Filipino and you did the same, you are my people. And if you are Jamaican, we are more than my people. Because I will tell you, no matter what pigmentation we have, we belong to that island up there. That's where we came from. And the truth is, I believe, and today's being 
Constitution Day, our Founders Day. I believe when Columbus got down to Jamaica, they said go to Cayman too. Because for so many years, we have had that connection. And nobody can say different. It is the facts. Like who you like. Don't like who you don't like. But ladies and gentlemen, you can't get away from the truth. And we don't have to give away our country. No. But we have to be honest. And we have to be fair. Me. Me. All two. On my grandmother's side, St. Catherine and St. Elizabeth. See the red skin? And on my grandfather's side, from Westmoreland. See the bad hair? And our teachers, our teachers, and our judiciary, our doctors, our look at our caretakers, how we trust them to take care of our children, be in our home, know what we do, when we wake up, when we go to bed. Well, you'll always have good and bad, but I got good. Have nothing to hide about. And that little Aussie. Who I didn't say you are a driftwood and I can't, I gotta change your ministry. And he wanted to tell them that I am practicing Jamaican politics. What Jamaican politics? The first one that had Caribbean personnel to advise them and bring them down to speak for them was who? The PPM. And me, Edward Siag is a good friend, but he lost four elections and I won seven. The PPM. The PPM is divisive. That's what they are. When they should be bringing the country together and giving people the accolades that they are due for what they do. Because they clean our streets. They work in the old people's home. They tell you now, oh, you can't come here on a visa. Not a U.S. visa. Man, you crazy? That's what they said to me. But now, two days before the election, all done, can say, you, are, you, say, you Jamaican got a U.S. visa. So you can go from Jamaica to Miami and come Cayman on that visa. But you can't come from Kingston or Mobe to Cayman on that visa. And they tell you, and they run around to the Jamaican community and tell them that I am practicing Jamaican politics. You have never had anybody to care for you as we have done. I am fair. And I have lost the government over issues. But I have to be fair because at the end of the day, when I close my eyes and lay my bones down in Northwest Point Cemetery, where, well, I done told my wife, I got to bury me at home. Not Northwest Point. But I will be buried in this land where my ancestors lie. But I will not lie to you. And I am not going to choose good people and kick them out. I will not do it. We will battle for you. And bring the balance that is needed as we have done before in immigration. That's what needs to be done. So that Caymanian young people that we train, that we send to college, can get a job. Don't blame any Caribbean nationalities. I tell you tonight, there must be a balance. The fine-tuning can be done. But the immigration policy stinks. Business is moving. And I'm telling you, when a manager in this country loses his work permit, three Caymanian secretaries and administrators lose their job. Don't listen to all this yaya that's going on on Facebook. 
and some of the independents, they will say anything. They will send us down the river, my friends. Let's clean it up. Let's clean it up. Vote for this team you see here. Robert Borden. Borden Town East. Stafford Berry. Borden Town West. Denston Tibbetts. Red Bay. Teresa Borden. Georgetown East. Georgetown South, Mike Adams, your friend, Mike Adams. Georgetown West, Jonathan Pearcy. Jonathan has a flu tonight and couldn't be here. Paulina McGaw, let's send that young lady where she can do good. Let's take her down and bring her and put her in. You vote for her in Georgetown North. And in the west, Bernie Bush in the north. And in central, the good captain, the steadfast man, Captain Eugene E. Banks. And in Georgetown South, John Jefferson, we got a lot done together. And west, sorry, West Bay South. Not the PPM, the God is so divided. But West Bay West, I want 90% of the what? Yours truly, McKeever Bush.